Good afternoon. I th yeah, <laughs> make sure I turn off the, the fan before the thing turned on so we didn't get all wind sounds. Okay. Good afternoon. Welcome to episode 741. Today's topic is a declaration and also a um, action step. So, <laughs> no, I just thought of that. Anyway, the title today is um, You Are Responsible for Your Own Happiness. Let that sink in. And I'll reference something that happened today for me. So it's funny, I had the title written down two days ago and I thought, well, I should do that one today. And then when I saw what, what happened today, just lent to that. Anyway, before I jump into the whole topic and wherever I'm going to rant and rove in my thoughts, let me choose myself with something I do remember how to say, which is my name, Barry Selby. Hi, thanks for joining me. I am best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I help women create balance and love life and business because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And also that's what led to these talks over two years ago called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Art. That, that works. <laughs> so today we've got to the way to episode number 741. And the topic today is about you being the source of your own happiness. And I'm saying let it sink in because most people go, yeah, yeah, sure. And then they think about all the things they want or people they want in their lives so they can feel happy. That's a trap. And as I shared last night at a meeting that I've talked about here before a few times, which is I'm my, one of my passions is stamping out codependency. And this is a teaching about that. And I'm also going to reference a movie because I just got back from, I'm still a little schwitzy from riding back from, I, I would ride my bike down to the theater to go see a movie today. I went to see Rocket Man, uh, the Elton John fantasy biopic, because it's not a biopic like Bohemian Rhapsody. This is, this is actually a musical that is a largely loosely based on his life just in case you haven't seen it before i'm attempting to talk about this without doing any spoilers it's not like it's avengers but still the story has some beautiful pieces pieces in it that i don't want to spoil for you but i want to speak to this piece because this is something that's been on my mind a lot recently about people who are busy pursuing outside things goals directions destinations to make themselves feel happy and if they miss that target they feel so depressed now i'm not saying this is the cure for depression but I'm certainly saying this is an option to learn how to take charge, control, and dominion over your own emotional expression and emotional feeling. All right, enough preamble. Let's dive in, shall we? So again, I saw the movie today, Rocket Man. Literally, um, less than an, I left the theater about an hour ago, so that's why I'm still a little bit like <laughs> hot under the, the color, literally. Um, and I knew what I was walking into in a sense. I've seen some previews and heard some reviews and talked to some friends. And it is a movie about a person who's still living, so there's a lot of facts in there. But however, the way they played the movie and some of the scenes in the movie were very telling and speak to this topic because... So I'm sure I, had, I want to make sure I say this without leaking stuff from the movie. But the thing is, facts are known. Elton John had a problem with addiction to almost everything. And you talk about that in the movie a lot. And it's in, it's in the tabloid. So if, if you didn't read about that, I'm sorry I blew that for you, but that's the story of his life. But one of the ultimate things in the movie that I loved was the fact he finally, and it took a while, came around to realizing that he was the source of his own upset and happiness. And that cross that crossroads, that, that pivot point, is a game changer for people when they get that. It was for him. And there was a beautiful scene in it, which I won't talk about. Well, I might talk about it today, we'll see. It was, just, it, just, it was a perfect way of summarizing part of the healing, a big part of the healing journey for him. Because I'm going to frame this. I'm going to frame this how I talk. Okay. I, again, I don't want to leak too much stuff, but there was such a great scene in the movie. And I'm like, <sighs> it's like I, I'm trying to talk around it without saying it, but I want to say it. All right. Let me, let me talk about the, the, the construct first. For many people, and this is speaking psychologically speaking, not movie speak, <laughs> even though it portrayed that in the movie. For many of us, we carry wounds from our childhood. Period. Not necessarily consciously, not necessarily in our frontal awareness, because when we're very young, our frontal, frontal, uh, frontal cortex, our frontal awareness isn't there yet. Hang on. <coughs> Excuse me. So we imprint with that very, very young. So things happen to us, challenges, upsets, hurt, hurt, hurt experiences, painful things traumas, abusive parents, neglected parents, people who don't, uh, parents didn't touch us, all these different things, and I'm referencing the movie for that. Because it, it really portrayed this stuff beautifully. When that happens to us, because a lot of us go through that, we go through some form of upbringing where our parent, parental relationship with us as children isn't the most 
loving, supportive, unconditional, joyful, happy, and etc. For many people, and if you look around the world, you may be surprised to see the people in the world are walking around wounded still because they haven't healed it. They're dragging around these subconscious, unconscious, suppressed, repressed memories and programming, or say wiring is probably better way of putting it, about how things don't work for them. In Elton, Elton John's case, or uh, Reggie Dwight's case, he was he was basically brought in a very stern family and come from England. I mean, I, I can't recognize it. Where his dad didn't ever touch him, his dad didn't show much affection to him as a child, and his mother was caught in the middle of that, and so she got kind of standoffish too. And he went through a lot of his own challenges. I'm not saying it's the only way you go through it, but that's the way that most kids then do go through it to suppress and hold down their own feelings of expression. And in his case, because he, at a young age, was starting to discover that he might not be straight, that was even more challenging because he had nobody to talk to. He didn't feel safe at home, and especially with his father, that masculine energy wasn't, wasn't connected to him. And that's a problem for some people too, not, not the necessary, hang on, uh, let me take that apart. It can be a problem for a lot of people when they don't feel they can be received by their parents, that's what I'm trying to say, because I'm not talking about the, a, a problem about being straight or gay, that's not the part of the conversation, but the ability to not be able to speak our truth, to be listened to, supported, and helped by our parents. For a lot of us, relationships aren't necessarily, um, sorry, relationship with parents is not necessarily the most amazing thing that ever happened. So what's that got to do with anything? Well, let me tell you. Being raised in that sort of culture as children, we tend to look outside for love and affection because many children, there are, some, there are some rare cases where a child who doesn't get the love and affection from his family learns how to source internally, but that's a rarity. For most of us, and I include myself in this, we go through our preteens, teens, early adult life looking for things outside of ourselves to make us feel happy. Whether it's substances, whether it's material objects, whether it's people, or something else, we tend to find ourselves externally sourced for love, joy, happiness. And this is challenging because this is the codependence I'm talking about. I want to, I'm, I'm, my, my mission is stamping out codependence, as I said. I said it last night, got a quiet chuckle out of people. Because that's the thing, it is codependent. When you are looking to fill yourself up, excuse me, fill yourself up, to feel love, to feel joy, to feel happiness, to feel numb even by using things outside of ourselves to make us feel to feel that way. And I'm referencing the movie again because it was pretty clear in months along the movie where he was portraying Elton's uh, fall into um, addiction and overdose and other things he did along the way. So whether it was alcohol or drugs or sex or whatever it was, and, if, and he said it was also shopping, which he still has a problem with, he said, which I think is kind of funny, but it's true, is that, that those patterns are just there to numb ourselves, to hold ourselves back, to keep ourselves safe within a small, small box of comfort zone that we think we can only live in. There's a whole lot of life out here that we ignore, that we are afraid of, that we're unwilling to face because it's not safe outside this little box, this little, this little container, which we can which compress ourselves into where it's the only place we can feel safe. When we're born and very young, we're wide open, receivers, sponges, receiving everything from the world around us. And little by little for many of us, there are experiences, there are words said, there are actions taken by others around us that we recoil from. So when things are happening to us, instead of being wide open, we start to slowly start to close up. Our emotional freedom, our joy and happiness that's abundant becomes finite. And so slowly but surely, when things happen to us in our lives, from our parents, from our siblings, from our teachers, from our peers at school, from the neighbors, from whoever, we get less and less safe. And we start to close up our energetics and we close up our feelings of safety until we end up in a very small box. I was doing, I was doing that uh, that way, I think. No, that way. <laughs> I was trying to remember what I did on the screen. So basically a small box. And that small box is where we feel safest. And in fact, it's the only place that we feel safe because we've had enough experiences out in the world that we're not safe, that we know the only place we can go to is in that small box. The only way to express beyond that, the only way to express beyond that for most people, unless they do the work I'm going to talk about in a moment, 
is they need to use some sort of artificial support. Whether it's somebody they trust, hopefully out there that can help us expand and grow beyond our safety zone for a temporary period of time, like a relationship, a, part, a spouse, or some substance or, car, or material like cars, shoes, or drugs or alcohol. All these different things are props to avoid breaking down the walls and coming out into, the, into freedom. So we go from this massive open place of freedom as a baby to a small close-up little box as a teen, as an adult, because we don't feel safe. And so the happiness quotient or happiness delivery system is totally outside ourselves because we don't feel, because we don't feel safe and we feel that we repress this little box. We don't feel happy. We need something else to give us happiness and that's the trap because it's not real. Everything that we get from other people, everything we get from as property, as drugs, wears off. Sorry, it's supposed to bubble. But drugs and alcohol wear off. You have to keep perpetuating them to keep them going. Then they don't work as well. You need to do more of them. Same thing is true if you have an addiction to cars. I have a love of cars, not an addiction, honest. Um, or shoes, or clothing, or travel, or anything. That addiction is a perpetuation of need to be filled up from outside, which will never be fully filled up, which is why you have to keep increasing the dose, increasing the dose, increasing the dose, until you eventually either have a, wake, a, a painful awakening or a painful crash. And this is the challenge we face when we don't learn to love and find happiness within ourselves. So again, in, in the movie, there were some beautiful scenes, Ty gave us songs, and yes, I was in tears a few times during the movie, that spoke to this point about not being fulfilled from outside and being severely disappointed, upset, angry, hurt, wounded, all these different things. If, you ever, if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. And there was a scene at the, at, right at the back end, which was the, the last sequence, basically, where he had, he, and through the movie, he has a conversation with his younger self. But the closing piece of that was what I believe when I work with my clients, that's one of the things I love to see them do, which is to really make peace with the younger self to reparent themselves and to really come back to loving who they are when they were younger, when they first started building that little box, or rather when they first started constricting that little box. Because when you can do that from a caring, conscious, loving, forgiving place, that's when expansion happens. That's when magic happens. That's when the joy and happiness of you, who you really are, bursts forward. To get from here to there, from there to here. I'm sure I'm directing I didn't create a very good map for this. But to get from where you feel you're stuck to where you want to get to, that's a piece of work that needs to be done. It doesn't generally happen um, automatically. And the things it talks about, like externally sourced, aren't going to get you there. The work is really up to you. When I said you're responsible for your own happiness, I mean it from the point of view that you're also responsible, responsible for your own love, your own self support, your own care. It's not somebody else's job. Now, somebody else can offer that to you as a spouse, relationship partner, parent, but they can only go so far because you're the one that has to receive it. And if you're not able to receive it because of the wounds inside, then it won't get through. So for both expression of the loving inside of yourself and to receive more from outside of yourself, those walls, those wounds, those scars have to be healed. This is a part of my work, yes. It's also part of why I'm so passionate about this topic because once you learn how to do this, once you learn how to love and heal your younger self, your relationship with your younger self, more importantly, and your relationship with who you are now, once you have that transformational experience, then everything flows more easily. Your self-sufficiency and your self-love, your self-joy, your happiness from within is a given. It's easy, it's effortless, and it's perpetual, and it doesn't run out that's the promise of doing this sort of work is you get to have the joy and the celebration of life that is abundant and flows always because you know who you really are because the other part of this is when you start disconnecting from your younger self and putting yourself in a little box and holding yourself back you start to dis disidentify with your younger self and so your youthful energy is limited so some people feel old before their time partly because they've forgotten who they are as youngsters they just, they've cut off their youthful energy and that's, that's a, a shame simply put. So there's a lot of pieces of this thing. I'm just pulling little spokes out to, t to tell you about. And I really want to make sure you get this point. That you can have your youth back. You can have your relationship with your younger self back. You can have your freedom and joy back. You can have your openness and, and expansiveness and receptivity back. 
to get there, you've got to take down the walls. And to take down those walls means you've got to do the deeper work. So if somebody promises you to do a quick fix and you'll be over it and be fine, I don't recommend that path. It might be worth doing just to get a temporary patch, like a Band-Aid, but it won't heal the wound. Going deep with somebody who can do this work with you is the only way it's going to work. And I'm being pretty blunt about that. It is part of my work, so I'm not, you know, I can't, that I do this with my clients. I'm, the only one, I'm not the only one that does this. Um, that's why therapists can be very useful when you find them that knows what they're doing. A coach who has therapeutic skills or psychological skills like myself is somebody you can work with as well. Going to work with somebody who can help you go deep, especially when it's one-on-one. -on -one. In group is great too. I've done many seminars myself. I've taken many workshops. I've taught a few. And group process is really wonderful too. However, if you've got something really in the way, it has to be done with more um, hands-on, focused, directed support. I think there's anything else I want to say about that. That's really the point, ultimately, is are you willing to do the work for yourself? Do you love yourself enough? Are you willing to love yourself enough to have a transformational experience so you can get back to who you really are? My invitation is for you to say yes to that. And if I'm somebody you want to work with, I'll put a couple of links in the comments so you can get some support. So just, you know, put a link to the discovery session with me in the comments because that's one of my gifts is a complimentary conversation to get you started. And to see if we want to work together. There's no, there's no requirement. There's no hooks. I, we will talk about what I offer after I help you get clear where you want to go. And if it fits, great. If it doesn't, it doesn't. It's really simple. Secondly, um, secondly, what do I want to say? I'm just thinking what else I want to put in the comments as a suggestion, as an invitation, as an offer, as a call to, as a call to action. You know what? Why don't you leave it like that? There's other things I offer, and I'll tell you about those when we talk. <laughs> there we go. So... I trust this makes sense. It really is um, practicable, it is effective, it is real, and it can be transformed in your own life. If you're carrying around a sense of limitation or a containment or a restriction from your upbringing because it didn't work out the way you wanted, or maybe you don't remember it very well because that's even been suppressed, maybe it's time now to change that paradigm, to have what you really want, to be free to love the way you want to love, and to be back in love with yourself so you can be happy because you are who you are. I think I made my point. Um, with that, I thank you for watching. This, by the way, is my Facebook Live. I do every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time. If you want to watch me live, it's on my personal page on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. My business page, which is barryselby.auto, is where the replays are all put, so you can find them there if you want to watch previous broadcasts, and I've got some good content out the last few couple of days, so you want to watch that. And thirdly, I have the replays also on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. Please like, please, hang on. Please like my business page and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. There we go. So facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby to author. Please like the page. And youtube.com username Barry Selby. The playlist on there is Messages from the Masculine. So subscribe to that channel. Enjoy the rep replays in whichever format you prefer and uh, transform your life. Yeah, I think my stuff is that good. <laughs> <coughs> Not too much ego on that one. Um, so if you have any questions, thoughts about this, please put them below in our spam and I sign off. I hope this has been of help to you. This is a reminder that you do deserve the best, that you can have the best, and you can do it yourself with some guidance if you want. With that, thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. And uh, I invite you to take care of yourself. I'll speak to you again soon. Bye.